There we go. That's better. Guess we'll just have to crawl across. There, 13. Boom. Completely tuned down. Okay, we got a problem. We're running 360 pounds ahead. What's uh, what's causing that? Uh, no fan. And yeah, it's running really hot. So instead of shutting it down, we just let it run and cycle off of that, which is why you shut it down. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What's going on guys? So today we're working on a cooler that's not working. And you can tell this bad boy is old. It is a Chrysler Copen. That is old, 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 old. But I'll tell you what, after all these years, look how good of shape it is in. Went in here and took a quick look and thought, well, let's take a peek a poo. So it got a little warm in here when it was really hot. We had like the mid 90s all week. And you see we got a little bit of gunk here on it. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that off real quick and then uh, go up on the roof. I think uh, I've done some work here before on it until the box is starting to get a little wore out, but man, that's held up really good for as old as it is. That's a little bit as silicone needs worked out. Yeah, here's some other Chrysler Copeland, uh, Copen, K-O-P-P-I-N. Done, uh, I think I did a video on this one here. School's out, so everything's shut down. But yeah, it's passed through all the way from one side to the other. Uh, got the evaporator right there. And then I added a defrost clock because it uh, originally had um, pressure, uh, pressure control for temperature. Then they got a freezer over there. So let's get this brushed off real quick. I mean, I don't, that's not why it's acting up, but I just want to get it while we're at it. Watch you don't get too much of that down in the drain, so we'll, we'll like get that out of there like that. All the time I'll just run the brush right along the side and get it all out there that way. Go outside, see what we got. Thermostat is set at looks like 40 ish, 39, 35, something like that. All right, there it is. I remember this being really dirty last time, if I remember correctly. It's been a couple minutes since I've worked on it. And I remember right, I ended up doing work on the freezer at the same time when I was here. Freezer sight glass is clear. Condenser coil's not horrible. I bet you she's low on charge. Yep, we low. We're just gonna pop the whole top so we can maybe take a look for refrigerant leaks. Get the good old aluminum coil there that has been so trouble free in uh, my dreams. Okay, she's naked. Yeah, I'd have to go through. I know I did. A, I know I did. I know I worked on it. I think. I think I made a video on it. I don't remember. We're just gonna kill it midstream. That way we get pressure on both sides because you figure if I was to shut it off the right way, it would pump down and wouldn't have no refrigerant in the evaporator. Raise the ladder up. You're supposed to have three rungs. Okay, make sure you get that ladder high enough. You should strap it too. Fans and panel H13, H13. So that means there must be a panel over here somewhere. I wrote that down in there. I think, oh, I remember. There's some panel way out here in front. There we go, that's better. Guess we'll just have to crawl across. H, and here is 13. There, 13, boom. There we go. Completely tuned down. Nothing there. Right in between next cap tubes is a good spot for it to leak, especially up in here. I think we are on the roof, most likely. Well, I've gone through here and really focused on the uh, bellows of the pressure switch and I'm not getting anything there. Now there is some oil, oil up in here, which, not oil, but I mean, obviously it's it's dirty from where it's, let's, say, let's take the cover off because I'm telling you, I didn't find anything the last time either. 
it's somewhere in here and obviously it's it's small because it's been at least i thought it's been two years probably since i've had to do anything with this Let's see if we can get a better reading inside here usually you've got leaks right down there on that high side pressure port you can get in there right away because it's trapped it in there we're on super mode yeah we're not getting nothing basically it usually leaks in this bellows area and not getting anything on that i've even went slowly along the whole tube there um, scanned the evaporator's whole face plate and all the end caps nothing on that okay we got a problem we're running 360 pounds ahead what's uh what's causing that Woo! hot 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 she is hot i think we have us a head pressure control that's taking a poop i believe we do sit there and look for a leak come back cold though Got 22 degree evaporator and 133 degree condensing temperature. Coil does not look that dirty. Maybe it is dirty, I don't know. Let me clean it out real quick, cause I mean, 375 is a little ridiculous. Let's uh, feel the uh, valve, see if it's bypassing. So, got a nice, bright light screwing the shadow up so you got hot gas coming in right here on top so you gotta watch your fingers hot gas is definitely coming into that van valve like crazy let's get a picture of the data tag so they can Make certain we got the right stuff, which, yeah, we can actually read it, imagine that. There we go. Yeah, we're just gonna have to get a new head pressure control. I mean, they ain't got no food down there anyway, so not a humongous deal. If I had to, I could always cut it out and just bypass it and then come back and remove it, but I I think we're gonna just let it go and shut it down and call it a day. Um, it's, it's obviously bypassing. What I could do, is pinch that uh, line going to the uh, valve. What's funny is, is why did it stick? But I mean, it could be anything. But you can tell that we're starving. Side glass is bubbling. Well, if I had to put my gauges on sooner, I would have caught that. One of the things where you didn't want to disturb it until uh, until you made sure that you know you, you didn't create you know false leaks and stuff i mean it's definitely dirty but it's not 380 pounds dirty i'd feel better though if it was clean so let's see if we can clean it out real quick go ahead and give a little bit of water here and uh then we'll spray it out with the uh, blower i don't feel like getting my battery operated battery pack out this will kind of tell me right off the bat if it's an issue with that I'm kind of doing a mix of hot and cold water if we weren't already running really stupid high pit pressure, I'd probably just run pure hot water. The only nice thing about these coils is they clean up really easy. Never mind when they go bad and all that stuff. And then when we get done, we'll go ahead and blow it all out there into my tool bag. That way it can get all wet. Head pressure still 382. There was a little bit of water on there, so it ain't gonna make much of a difference. But we're gonna go ahead and get it cleaned up. All right, we are pretty much clean as can be right now. All right, let's look at our gauge. Yeah, we're running 349, and I'm sure it'll come back up here in a second. So, yep, we're gonna need to get a new head pressure control. That's about all we can do on that. Well, we'll give them a call and let them know, and then uh, maybe I'll record it when I come back. If not, we'll just deal with it then. Okay, we're gonna put this into a pump down by putting it into defrost. That'll pump it down, then it'll make it easier to recover it right out of the receiver. And then uh, we'll come back and get it. They said no big deal. No, uh, no food in there right now. 
Well, it's been running for a while. We're at nine pounds and 275. Well, there's 8.9, 8.8. It's finally starting to drop. We're gonna go ahead and kill it. Hopefully no damage was done to the compressor. You get the valve ordered and go from there, but yeah. It's gonna wrap this one up, guys. If you don't see an ending for it, then you know we didn't record it. Thanks for watching, later. All right, so it's really warm in here. They have no cooling. They left it on, didn't shut it off. That should be the first thing the office should be telling people is to turn the things off. But So all of our breakers are on. Let's go upstairs and see what's going on. Well, I seen these units from below and thought, oh boy, good old Linux. But instead we've got split systems, which is always such a nice cost savings that people put in to save some money. And so the front part of the store is cool. Feels like we're pumping heat. See how bad our coils are, cause you know these never get checked. Eh, slightly packed, not too horrible. Yeah, so here's a high quality Linux. Ah, no fan, and it's running really hot. So instead of shutting it down, we just let it run and cycle off of that, which is why you shut it down. Wow, look at this. That really don't look like 12 inches, does it? Absolutely amazes me some of this work you see. Well, this is an hour and a half from our shop, country driving. Let's go ahead and take a look in here. This good old Linux probably uses an 800 RPM motor, which I surely don't have. May have to make a regular one work. And that's a kitchen area and they don't even have a fan cycle on it. So whoever hacked this thing in didn't even do a halfway decent job. Let's look at that suction line too. Linux is always big and running bigger suction lines. Ah, eh, we'll just run a smaller one. It's okay. So I yank out the screws. I'm like, oh, why does this one pull off? Well, probably because we got silicone all up underneath there because they probably got bees in there or something. Good. Crazy. They silicone that area in, that's fine. Ah, oh, there's a reason why it's not running. The old capacitor. Oh, this is a real exciting video, ain't it? Oh, look at that. That is a, that is a bath. <laughs> That's a bathroom supply line for a toilet. <laughs> that is as unique as it comes. Ugh. Yeah, you get regular two wire there. Comes across. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing but the best. Nothing but the best. Good golly. I'm loving it. Seven and a half. I was thinking it was probably a five, but my goodness. It did its mama proud. We got a new contactor there. I'm going to wait to see if this motor works first. Get the new capacitor in there. Let's go ahead and see if this thing runs. Look at that. Not bad. Of course, you know, it didn't do it any good setting her cycling off. It's no six. It's a five ton unit, HS29 unit. So let's go and get this uh, contactor changed and uh, we'll check to see how this coil is. Which I don't know if this is one pass or two pass. Let me take a look inside there and see how bad it looks. We got the contactor in there. Just make sure our phase is right because they were all brown wires there. It sounds a little loud. Yeah, I think it's backwards. All right, let's reverse it. May not have a lot of time to do what I was wanting to do. You can see that clouds don't look good. Oh, that's quieter. There we go, instant heat coming out. That's good. Go ahead and let it run for a bit, see if we can find a water spigot. Uh, definitely would not hurt to probably get these uh, done up, cleaned up. OK, 
okay. We just pulled the filter out. It's not horrible. I don't have one of these, so what I usually do, right on there, checked it, it was okay. And the date that I looked at it. That way they know that I actually looked at it. That's a bad design. I don't know how many times that gets bumped off with all the brooms and stuff. 83 degrees coming in. Let's see what I got going out. I'll just say 55. That's 28 degrees. Quite a drop. And speed's probably not right. It's putting out the air. It's been in that long. Good, leave it as it goes. Went ahead and threw my rope up here so that I can pull my hose up. So we went ahead and got this one washed out, even though it wasn't the one we were here for. See all the chunks of crap that we got out on the floor, on the ground there. Wasn't horribly bad on the inside of this one. The um, it's definitely running cooler. By far, it's running cooler. But uh, you can see some of the nasty crap that came out. So they're going to run a lot better with that temperature rise. I'm not even going to bother putting my gauges on it. Suction's still cold, so no artificial head pressure throwing everything off. Not supposed to have to put your gauges on it every time if you don't uh, have indications. Now this one, on the other hand, scares me a little more. May need to check it over, because that's not very cold suction. Fantastic. It's one thing, it, it, like I always say, no good deed goes unpunished. So you wash it off and you now have cleaned the coil, more airflow, now the head pressure drops and you don't get full liquid going to the metering device and then now you'll have a problem after you leave and it's all your fault. So yeah, I don't even feel hot air coming out. So you have to go grab the gauges. Got her opened up, we're hooked on. We got about three degrees subcooling, 40 degrees, 42 degrees superheat, 33 degree evaporator and we've got a 97 degree condensing temperature. Looks to me like they've already had to add refrigerant before, 410A. Can't read the charts. I'm seeing some subcooling things down here. I'm gonna shoot for maybe a nine degree subcooling, whatever. We're gonna add a little, little bit of a refrigerant to it and call it a day. Wasn't what we was here for, but you've been here. Give the customer some value for their money. We're busy as heck today. This whole week we've been in the mid 90s and usually we're in the 80s, so. Anyhow, um, let's get this thing juiced up and hopefully get on down the road. All right, my guy over at Inficon sent me the uh, Waytech Pro Scale here, and the selling point on this is 275 pounds, but it also can do down to uh, three gram increments on the uh, R290 and stuff like that. Anyhow, the display and stuff, only thing I don't like about this is the case is kind of big. I mean, there's quite a sizable difference there. Thickness-wise, you can see it's pretty thin. Let's go ahead and open it up. Now, as you know, I got the Testo scale, so I usually use that, but I've been wanting to show this off. One thing that this has got the other ones don't have is it has the ability to have the tank there inverted and then come right on out, so that makes it a little easier. It's not very big when you take it out of the case, and it has a full-blown color display here, and it's made out of metal. It's, uh, it's gonna hold up pretty good. So it does come with the magnet that holds it right there. Big selling point on this, AA batteries. I mean, that's killer. Easy replaceable cord there that you can replace. So if it goes bad, you can just swap the cord out. As far as zero in it, that fast. Okay, we're purged out. Zero back out again. Let's go ahead and start adding some to it. Kind of watch our scale there. Probably gonna go ahead and put in about eight ounces for starters and see where we're at once that happens. I mean, it is nice to have the scale built into the testos, but if you don't have testo gauges that do that anyway, here's a nice alternative. Um, I've had my CPS for quite a while, but it tends to get a little bit wet and it goes out. Ounces it's all by itself. So if you want to go 200 ounces, you can just go 200 ounces without well, doing the math, kilograms and grams. I don't know if True Tech Tools is going to have this for sale. Um, they have multiple different things, but definitely check them out. Save 8% if they do have it. If not, ask for it. I'm sure they can get it for you. Uh, use survival as your 8% discount code. There's four degrees of subcooling. Go a little bit more. I know 410A is temperamental and it's going to change on me out at the last minute, but surprisingly, that storm looks like it's gone around me. Superheat's finally starting to drop. Subcooling's still dinking. So 
So either we got enough in there to the TXV, which I'm assuming is TXV. It'd really be nice to have known that. That's why you write that crap inside the panel. But judging from the half-assery that was done on this install, when you have little jumper panels left over from some old unit, you just wire time in there like that, hoping they'll short into something. It's just what goes around comes around. And what happens is that mentality just goes into when you have to hire somebody. That's what sucks. 13 degrees superheat. Subcooling's still low. I'm going to say we're probably an orifice. Probably an orifice. It's a cheaper unit. Betcha. All right, so added a little more. Superheat came down to seven. That tells me it's not a TXV or it would be trying to maintain it. So we're going to go ahead and stop there, watch it a bit. We may have to remove a little bit, but that should, uh, should be where we need to be at, give or take a little bit here. Okay, this has got Bluetooth on it, which I think can go right to their app. There's some dinger bells. I ain't sure exactly what that does. Alarm set point, how many ounces you want? Low flow warning. That's kind of crazy. Hit the down arrow. Brightness. Oh, display dimming after one minute or five minutes. That's cool. Power, I bet you. Yep, uh, auto shut off after 30 minutes or 90 or whatever you want. That's kind of cool. Okay, the dining room is not as cool as I thought it was, but it is set for 71, so they should be doing a lot better now that they have refrigerant levels corrected. And the condenser's not running so hot. It feels a lot better back here, 79, so we gotta be pulling out some major, major humidity, so yeah. All right, guys, that's going to wrap that one up. Pretty simple, but that's about how half the air conditioning calls are. Bag capacitors, dirty coils, low in refrigerant, dirty filters, airflow issues. Wipe them out, just go through all the stuff as a routine, and uh, just don't look uh, at the one item that's wrong because you can see all the other things that we had going on that low on charge on the front unit and being dirty. I could have just replaced the capacitor and jetted, and it would have sort of worked, but wouldn't have worked as good as what it could have. If you want to be better than the rest, just do more than the rest. Anyhow. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have, you know what to do. Till next time, later. That scale works pretty good. Looking about 160 pounds, fits right on there. Going in nice and easy.